I knew students laughed when I said I was going to become a stand-up comedian. Well, you're not laughing anymore, are you? Six mark question from the Year 10 Rivers uh, test here. Question rehydrographs, quite a tricky question um, on the basis that there's quite a lot going on in this image. Students are always scared of hydrograph questions as a general rule. Don't be, it's incredibly straightforward. Hydrographs are probably the easiest graph question that can come up. In essence, the black line shows the amount of water in a river. The blue bars show the amount of rainfall. They're always very easy questions. Just don't panic. Particularly easy here as they've actually given you a key as well. So don't panic when you get hydrograph questions. They are straightforward. First thing I want you to do, obviously, is to highlight the keywords of the question. Uh, and we've got to start at the top here. Study figure 14, flood hydrographs for two different streams after the same storm. So you've got to be aware here that your rainfall is the same event in both of these. The reason the examiner has done that is he doesn't want you talking about the amount of rainfall uh, affecting a hydrograph. He wants something different. So 4.7, let's have a look at it. Differences, keyword here. I don't want similarities. If you give me similarities, I'm not going to give you any marks. Differences in the shape. Right, in the shape. What that means is you need to look at that black line and tell me how the shape of it alters. We'll go through it in a moment. Uh, uh, it's really, really straightforward. They couldn't have made this question any easier if they tried. Flood hydrographs, obviously above, are caused by both human and physical factors. It's a six mark question. Hopefully you can work out from this. There are three marks for human factors. There are three marks for physical factors. You only need one of each, but um, it is a six mark question. So you have to develop quite a lot of detail in these arguments. So the actual question there is, do you agree? So at some point you're going to have to tell the examiner that you either agree or disagree. And then it tells you there, use figure 14. So obviously you're going to use the figure, your own understanding. So you've got to bring in your own understanding as well, if you can, to explain, give reasons for your answer. Because it's a six mark question, it would be fantastic if you can identify your case study of Boss Castle here to just add a little bit more evidence to your answers. So it's a busy question. There's lots going on. So it's really crucial you highlight the keywords so we don't miss what the question's asking us. Right then, um, your three points here that I'd look at in terms of differences in the shape. We've got Oswick Beck there and Clapham Beck. Hopefully you can see Oswick Beck has a steeper rising limb, rises far faster than Clapham Beck. It also has a higher peak discharge all the way up here at 20, I think I'll put 25 on the next slide, so give me, let me off on that, it might be 24, and around about 10 here for Clapham Beck. That's measured in QMEX, it will always tell you that in the graph. And a shorter lag time, the difference between highest or peak rainfall and peak discharge is far, far, far shorter in Oswick Beck compared to Clapham Beck, where look how far the laser pointer has to go on that example. So those are the difference in the shape. All you have to do is explain why on earth Oswick Beck could be um, a different shape. So our physical factors that hopefully you've been taught include the amount of vegetation, the thickness of the soil, the steepness of the slope, the size of the drainage basin and the type of precipitation. In this answer, I think on the next slide, I'm going to go through vegetation amount, but just quickly, uh, the thickness of soil would mean um, the thicker the soil, the more infiltration can take place before the soil saturates. That for, uh, therefore means less surface runoff and the water will reach the river slower. Steepness of slope, uh, the steeper slope, the faster water will run down it due to the force of gravity acting on it. So therefore, if it's steeper, water will reach the river faster. Uh, also, steep slopes generally have thin soils because soil will be washed away by any uh, falling rain. So therefore, less infiltration and more surface runoff again. Uh, size of drainage basin, a much bigger drainage basin um, would mean that water is likely to get to the river slower because the water could fall in many different areas within that drainage basin. Whereas a smaller drainage basin, water will rush in there much faster because it's got less places to go, less chance to infiltrate as an example. Type of precipitation, some of you had a go at doing this in the exam and did it quite well actually. It is in terms of snow melt. Um, in terms of snow, snow initially means that there's less chance of flooding on the basis that um, snow itself stores the water. The issue comes then when the snow melts. If the snow melts, it means uh, that the soil is often frozen and impermeable, so water rushes to the river all at once. It could mean a very, very, very rapid rising limb is seen. 
Human factors, urbanisation is the one I'll actually go through in the answer. Agriculture, if you're ploughing your fields down towards a river, you create channels for the water to rush into and therefore it reaches the river faster. That therefore means uh, you're likely to have a uh, faster rising limb and also a higher peak discharge. In addition, when you're ploughing the land, it compresses the soil together, so it actually makes it impermeable, so water runs off more. Deforestation, linked to um, the one above, actually, vegetation amount. I'll leave that one because I'll do it in the answer in a moment. And then management slash defences. Um, some of you in your answer were talking about levees. The levees don't really alter the amount of discharge in a river. I mean, if anything, they actually increase the discharge because uh, the river can carry more water. It's a higher carrying capacity. The one to be aware of there is dams. Uh, dams can withhold water back. So if you were to look at Clapham Beck, you could argue that in Clapham Beck, um, the dam that was built on the river was closed. The gates were closed to stop water reaching the river because they were worried of a flood. And therefore they reduced, or sorry, not reduced, sorry, they let that water out, let's say about 12 hours after the rainfall had started. Is not true in Clapham Beck, but you would get the marks if you argued that. Right then, our actual answer, we're going to do vegetation amount and urbanisation. So start of this uh, answer, you answer the question. Remember, the question is, do you agree? Yes, I agree that both physical and human factors could be responsible. Done. You've answered the question. You might get one mark there, if I'm being honest. Let's go through the explanation. A human factor could be urbanisation construction of roads and path and they're usually made out of tarmac right keywords impermeable means the amount of infiltration will reduce and the amount of surface runoff will increase you've used all the proper terminology here you are going to pick up a lot and lots of marks in the uh, in the hat or in the bag here when the examiner looks back over here and goes oh they have used the correct terms this means water reaches the river faster now i'll just pause it there where hopefully the laser point is lined up your problem here is if you just stop to that point, the explanation is very good, but you haven't used the figure and you're going to trap yourself in the lowest level of marks. As soon as you start using the figures we've done here, this could be responsible for the 12 hour shorter lag time and steeper rising limb in Oswick Beck. You are into the top level of marks straight away. You've used the figure. You've explained the reason why you are golden. Physical argument then. Physical argument. Look, it's in green as well. That's nice. Physical factor could be uh, the amount of natural vegetation on the river banks. Now, I've used the word natural here. I certainly haven't used the word planted vegetation because that would be a human factor. More vegetation means more interception by leaves and branches. Key word interception means less water reaches the soil. So the soil is less likely to saturate. Another key term, that means there'll be less surface runoff here. So the river will be less flashy. It will also reach a lower peak discharge and hopefully you can see that in Clapham Beck, which is the example I've used here. I've said it's 15 Qmex lower than uh, Oswick Beck. I actually think it's 14 Qmex when I look at it again. Uh, so always just check those uh, graph figures carefully. Now the red sentence there at the bottom. Now this is just one of those real top end Mabel skills here, which is if you get any questions, do you agree? You can always get away with just saying yes or no. However, what you can also do is say which one is more important, which factor is the most important, and it shows a little bit of evaluation. If the exam board put an explain question like this in, you don't need to evaluate, but you're certainly not hurting your cause by doing it by saying, overall, I think human factors are more important as we have the ability to manage the river, including the planting of trees. It's just that extra little twist on that question, which the examiner can read and goes, well, yes, they agreed they've made a decision. And they've also justified the reason why. Come and see us down in HA if you have any questions about that. Any questions about that question? One of my favourite questions that that have come up uh, from the AQA board. So more than happy to talk you through it.